Hello, Image Design students. This is Mrs. Brown, and in this video recording, I will be um, teaching you how to complete the Unit 15 graded assignment. First things first, we're going to open up GIMP. And in this Unit 15 project, you're going to take an image and modify it to make look like it's being reflected in a pool of water. So to start off, we're simply going to um, open, file open, you want to make sure you go to your image design folder, wherever you have it saved, your Tech 30 course resource files, open up your Unit 15 folder, and choose any one of these images that you would like to use. I am going to go ahead and use this image here. and click open. You're then going to save this in your unit 15 folder as reflection. And then click save. And we're ready to begin. Um, so double click the image layer over here in your layers list and we want to name this background. and then hit enter. Um, make sure that the new background layer um, stays selected. So you want this to stay selected. And then you're going to click select all, and then edit copy, and then edit and paste. This is gonna become a floating selection layer we're simply going to click the Add New Layer button to add it to its own layer. We're then going to rename this layer Landscape, hit Enter, and then we're actually now going to rename this background layer Reflection, and then hit Enter. So you should now have two layers, Landscape and Reflection. So we're going to be working on the landscape layer. Here you're going to go ahead and click the free select tool. And you're going to click and drag around the bottom of the image to outline the area for the reflection. Make sure to select all the way to the bottom of the image. Okay. So we're going to do that right now. All right. So with our free select tool, I'm going to start here and I am going to click around the part of this image that I want to keep. Uh-oh, it did not keep my... <coughs> I'm going to have to start again. Okay. I apologize, my mouse is double-clicking when I am not making it double-click. Okay, and it did it again. We'll try this again. I'm going to start making longer areas. Okay, now we're going to come back up to our starting point and we have our selection here. Now in the layer menu, you're going to simply click mask and then add layer mask. In this dialog box, you want to click selection. Make sure invert mask has a check next to it. 
Inverting the mask means you're going to protect everything outside your original selection. And then you're going to click Add. So this masks everything except for um, the area you originally selected. Okay. So to see the mask, you'll simply just hide the reflection layer. And there you have it. So we're going to click the select menu and then none to get rid of our selection there. And you can also see what you did over here. All right, so we're going to use the flip, um, the flip command, and it's going to basically help us create, um, create a mirror image of a layer. You'll see how that works next. So you want to select the reflection layer and then you're going to click the uh, layer menu, go down to transform and then flip vertically. And this is going to literally flip the image upside down. You can see that here. You're then going to click the move tool and in the image window, you're going to hold your shift key on your keyboard and you're going to either press and hold or repeatedly press down the arrow key on your keyboard. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to move this reflection down until it really appears it's a reflection of the image. If you go down too far, you can um, just move it up. There we go. Make sure you click once on the image window. So if you're holding the shift key, it's going to move really quickly. If you hold, just only use the up and down arrows on your keyboard, it will move a little bit more slowly. So you kind of want to just move this until you feel you have an exact reflection. There we go. I'm feeling like I'm getting there now. Kind of gauging my reflection off of these little brushes right here. I can see there's reflection here and here. And so now I have it how I like it there. Okay. Next step, you're going to add a new layer. So we're going to click layer, new layer, and we're going to name this layer blue water. And we're going to click OK. You want the blue water layer to be in between the landscape and the reflection layer. So it should say landscape, blue water, and then reflection. We're going to go ahead and select the blue water layer. And we're going to click the foreground color button here. And we're going to choose a blue color for the water. Now I want mine to be kind of a cloudy, hazy, light, light, light blue. You choose whatever color of blue you would like. And then you're going to click OK to choose that color. You'll then select the bucket fill tool and then click the image window to add the color. We're going to make it look more transparent and realistic soon. If you don't like the color, you can just redo the previous steps until you find the color of blue that you like. So select the blue water layer. And at the top of the layers list, you're going to click and drag the opacity slider to about 25%. And you can see it looks much more opaque there. Um, the reflected image is now visible through the blue water. Um, if you add another color, it will still be transparent. If you don't like how it looks, choose a different color for the blue water layer. I actually want mine to be a little bit more um, blue. So I'm going to do that now. 
until I find a blue color that's just a little bit darker. When you like how the water looks, you are done with that part of the project. Now, select the reflection layer. And here we're going to click the filters menu. And then we're going to go down to distorts and then over to ripple. And this is going to kind of, it's going to add a rippling effect. Make, it's going to make that water kind of look like it's, um, rippling. So come down to where you can see it uh, in the preview. So in the ripple dialogs box, ripple dialog box under options, you want to make sure that um, anti-aliasing is selected. You want to be horizontal on the orientation. Under edges, you want it to say smear. And under wave type, you want it to be sign. In the period field, you want this to be 40. In the amplitude field, you want it to be five. And the phase shift, you want it to be zero. When you have all of those set, you'll simply click OK. And when it's done processing, the reflection layer will be rippled. So now you can see that the water looks a little bit rippled. If you don't like the way it looks, you can undo and repeat with different settings. Now we're going to add a shore. So we're going to add a new layer. So we're going to click layer, new layer. We're going to name this shore. We're going to move this shore layer to the top. And we're going to select the shore layer. And in our colors, we're going to select the foreground color that looks like dirt or sand. So, um, and it's going to be like a shore right here. So I'm going to go somewhere down here. And click OK. And that's the color that I'm going to use. You're then going to click the paintbrush tool and select in my brushes. I'm going to select hardness um, 50, 51 by 51 right here. And I'm going to use the size of my brush. About 25 for starters. Um, and then you're going to click in the image window, I'm going to click and drag along the water's edge to um, paint a shore. So just here along the edge, actually, I'm going to move my brush down just a little bit, actually. I'm going to actually go to 17. So I'm just going to go along the water's edge here. To have my shore. Created. Okay. Um, if you'd like, you can actually zoom in um, to make that step a little bit easier. I'm going to go back to 100%, but if you wanted to zoom in while you were coloring along the shore to make that easier, that's just fine. Now I'm going to click my Select by Color tool. And then I'm going to click the shore. Make sure that you click on the line that you just colored. And it's going to select everything that I just drew because it is all one color. Now in my filters menu, I'm going to click noise. And then I'm going to go over to HSV noise. This stands for hue saturation value. Um, in this dialog box, in the holdness field, I want to type three. In the hue field, I want it to be zero. 
And in the saturation field, I want it to be 100. And in, I'm going to drag the value slider to find a graininess that I like. So pay attention to the graininess. Um, it's going to make it look really sandy. You can see how it changes in the preview. You can see how it can look super grainy. You can play around with this. And then um, I'm going to stick right there. And then click OK. If you don't like how it looks, you can always undo and repeat the steps with different settings. And you can see my shore here. Is complete. So now I'm going to click select and then none so that you can see my completed image. And that is the end of the unit 15 project. So we're simply going to click file save. Now you're only halfway done with the unit 15 project to com, um, complete a second image. You will simply click file open, choose a different image. You're going to name this reflection to Repeat all the steps from this video to create a second image. And you can play around with different colors of water. You can make your shore smaller or larger. Um, just do something a little different. And once you have your second image 100% complete, so it will have a reflection and all of these layers, you are ready to submit your project. So here you'll go to your image design folder, your course resource files, you're going to open your unit 15 um, folder to make sure that you have both of your reflection images, your GIMP images. You can then right click and send this to a compressed folder and you're ready to submit that unit 15 project. So you'll go into the image design class, click on tools and assignments, go all the way down to your final image design project and you can review the rubric to make sure you have all steps for both images. You'll then add a file from your computer, and then you can drag and drop your zipped unit 15 folder with both of your images. Once it is 100% loaded, you'll simply click add you will click submit. I am not going to click submit. I don't want to save my own work. And you can celebrate because you just finished your very last image design project. Good luck. If you have any questions, let me know.